What is up guys, welcome to your third JavaScript tutorial and as promised in this tutorial I want to talk to you guys about a huge concept in JavaScript, probably the most important concept that you guys need to learn and that is the use of variables. So go ahead and try to remember all the way back to like fifth grade algebra class until you first learn about variables. Now if you can't remember, here's a little refresher. In order to use a variable, or what a variable basically is, is you take something like the letter X and you set it equal to something else, like the word ham. And then, when your math teacher wrote something like I love X, or X comes from a pig, you understood that this meant I love ham, and ham comes from a pig. That is because X and ham were basically the same thing. So that is pretty much what a variable is, it's just a fancy word for a placeholder. A variable is a placeholder, holds the place of something else. And let me go ahead and delete that first of all. So in JavaScript, we use variables a whole bunch. And we use them kind of in the same way, but a little bit different. Now, in order to tell JavaScript that we're going to be working with a variable, we need to write the keyword VAR. This tells JavaScript, all right, you ready for this? We are about to make a variable. You need to include that. The next thing that you write is the name of your variable. I'm just going to go ahead and name my variable x, but you know, you can name it whatever you want. So after this, you go ahead and write the equal sign. Now, the equal sign is called the assignment operator technically like if you're learning this because you have a JavaScript class and you're trying to refresh on JavaScript and he says alright what's the equal sign called in JavaScript you need to say it's the assignment operator but other than that in these tutorials I'm just gonna say equal sign because you know it's a whole lot easier but anyways you write var the name of your variables the assignment operator or equal sign and then you write what you want your variable to equal so go ahead and just write like 23 or something, write any value in there. And then, of course, like every single statement in JavaScript, we have to end it with a semicolon. So you're saying, all right, why is a variable useful? What can I do with variables? Well, a variable is useful for many reasons. I mean, already we know how to print something out on the screen. So go ahead and write document.write, and then inside your parentheses, instead of putting quotation marks in the line of text that it will print out. Go ahead and delete everything and just go ahead and write your variable. And check this out. Go ahead and save this and refresh it and see what we get. 23, just like that. So as you can see that it pretty much, this is what JavaScript is understanding. All right, you're making a variable called x and you're setting it equal to 23. So now whenever I come across the term x in my program, I know to that to substitute it for 23. So if you're saying, all right, Bucky, you probably could just wrote 23 in here and it would have printed out just fine. So why go through the trouble of writing X? Well, when you're building computer programs, you don't just have it occur one time. You might have a thousand different lines of code that include the term X. So you can either type out the word, or excuse me, the number 23 each time, or you can just go ahead up here change it one time and it's automatically going to change in all of your code for you. So anyways, it's going to save you a bunch of time and it's also useful for different reasons that I don't want to talk about right now or it will just confuse you. But anyways, that is what a variable is, how to make it, and how it's useful. Another thing I want to mention is, go ahead and delete this, is I said you can name your variable anything you want, but I kind of lied, just a little bit. The first thing I want to mention is this variables are case sensitive and I mean that in if we go ahead and try to type a capital X up here and refresh it and see what happens we get nothing on our screen that's because a lowercase x is different than an uppercase x the variable named Bucky or excuse me let me type that the variable named Bucky is different than this B U C K Y even though they're spelled the same if you try to run it you're gonna get nothing again because it looks at it as two different variables so make sure that if a variable might be messing up then that means that you might have capitalized something that you shouldn't have capitalized another thing I want to mention is you just can't you know use any symbols and letters you want you need to start your variable name with a letter or an underscore 
So since Bucky starts with a letter, you can also start it with an underscore. That would be valid, but you can't start it with like uh, and or a percentage sign or anything like that. It needs to start with an underscore or a letter. Another thing is that the other characters in your variable name must be letters, numbers, or underscores. For example, you can't have like um, Bucky percent dollar sign dollar sign two at sign. That's that variable doesn't make sense at all. Basically, just use letters, numbers, and underscores, and you'll be fine. And lastly, I want to talk to you guys is that the most difficult thing to remember is that your variables can't start with numbers. For example, if you have variable 6 Bucky equals 32 and you try to run this program, it's not going to work out because your variables can't start with numbers. That's probably probably the most forgotten rule, but I needed to tell you guys. So, whenever I said that you can name your variable anything you want, I kind of lied. You just have to remember these simple rules. It has to begin with a letter or an underscore and only use letters, numbers, and underscores. You can't use dollar signs, spaces, percent signs, at signs. You can't use any of those. And if you follow those simple rules, you'll be good to go. So now that we understand what a basic variable is and how it's useful in computer programming, we can go on and move to our next tutorial. And in the next tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you guys about the different types of variables. And trust me, it's going to be extremely useful. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.